Hey everyone, today I'm going to be answering the question, what does air smell like? Now this may seem like an easy answer, but if you think about it, when you're smelling something, you're not actually smelling the air, you're smelling the things in the air. So what does pure air by itself smell like? Or does it have a smell at all? Now in order to help me answer this question, I'd like to thank EnviroCleanse for sponsoring this video and also for sending me one of the world's best air filters. So the EnviroCleanse system uses a multi-stage treatment and filtration process. So it combines particulate filtration and also a chemical filter so that it removes chemical odors, fragrances, volatile organic compounds called VOCs, particulates, allergens, all at once. So pretty much any chemical, fragrance, dust particle, anything you can think of, this thing will filter out of the air. So what I'm going to be doing today is actually smelling what comes out of the back of it and seeing if it has any odor whatsoever. And then I'll compare it to a compressed cylinder of pure oxygen and see if you can actually tell the difference between pure oxygen and pure air. So first let's make sure this is working. So I'll just fill a room with smoke and turn it on and see if it can filter out the whole room. Okay, let's start filling the room up with smoke. Okay, I'm still here. Let's turn on the filter now and see how it works. Okay, three, two, one. So what's interesting about the tail end of this is notice how it filters exponentially. So notice right at the beginning there was a big change in how smoky it was in the room. But then as time went on, it kind of slowed down and now you're not seeing a huge change per time. And the reason that's happening is because of something called a concentration gradient. So when there's a high concentration compared to a low concentration, it's easy to absorb that out of the air. But when there's a low concentration, it takes more time, the reaction is slower. Now just for fun, let's see how much it can remove with one pass. So I'm going to shoot the smoke in from the sides. It takes the air in from the side and it shoots it out the back. So this is the outlet. So let's see how clean it is when it comes out the back. Okay, here we go. Well, I don't even see any come out. Okay, so we saw what it did with something you can see like smoke, but what about things you can't see? So this is showing the particulate levels and also the VOC level and formaldehyde levels. This is just in a regular room in my house. So it's still pretty fresh air, but now let's look at a room that I've polluted with it and stick my filter in there and turn it on high and see what levels I can get it down to. Okay, this is walking into the room that I polluted. Let's see it go up. So I sprayed bathroom cleaner in the air all over in here. So we've gotten to the limits of our air quality meter with the level of pollution in here. So now let's turn on our air filter and see if we can get this level down now. Okay, so after a long time, it's looking good now again. So this is actually the home version of their air filter. So you can actually have one in your very own home if you'd like. I'll put a link in my description where you can go check out the EnviroCleanse. So when you hear the question of what does pure air smell like, your first instinct might be to say that it smells like nothing. But remember in a previous video, I tested what it tastes like to drink pure water. And in that video, we found out that pure water actually does have a taste to us because what doesn't have a taste is our pure saliva. And so however different the thing you drink is from your saliva, then it has a taste. Basically, it's like a subtractive taste. So your body zeroes out whatever your natural saliva is like, and then anything that differs from that, it's a, it's a perceived taste. It's kind of similar to what happens to your eyes when you see an after image. For example, look at this image for around five seconds. And then I'm gonna turn it to white 
and you should be able to see a cyan and magenta image that now says after image. And switch. And basically one of the reasons this happens with our eyes is because our eyes continually do a color balance and when that input signal of the image goes away, the neural color corrections are still going, and so it actually shows an after image. So basically it's showing the color correction that your neural network was doing to try to color balance everything. And the reason our body does stuff like this is because if you think about it, we're only concerned about when things are changing. When things are going fine and steady state, then our body doesn't really have to worry about anything because if there's no danger or nothing happening right then, then we don't need to make any changes so we don't need to worry about it. And this kind of happens with all our senses. Our body is mainly concerned about when things change. And so our senses work best in a changing environment. So basically we don't sense temperature, we sense changes in temperature. And it's easier to see things when things are moving rather than when they're standing still. And even though our saliva has a lot of different chemicals in it and things dissolved in it, our brain basically zeroes that out. And so we actually do taste something if we change that level of balance in our saliva. And also whatever room you're in has a constant smell to it, but your brain basically zeroes out all of those smells and unless there's a new smell that comes in, you don't really notice a smell. That's why usually when you enter a room and smell something, the smell is really strong right away, but after a while it kind of goes away because our brain acclimates to it, our nose acclimates to the smell. So even though the air in my garage here may not seem that dirty or seem like it has any fragrances in it, when I smell pure air, I expect it to smell different than this regular air, as if the pure air has the smell and not the air around me. But let's try it out and see what happens. And then after this, I'm going to breathe pure oxygen and see if pure oxygen actually has a smell. Okay, let's turn it on. So it's sucking in the air from the side and it's coming out the back here. Okay, let's give it a smell and see what it smells like. Okay, so I was definitely able to tell the difference between the pure air coming out of the back here compared to the air in the room. So it was almost as if this air had the smell, when in reality it was just the absence of smell in this air compared to the air in my room. And if there's one way I could describe it, I think I'd describe the smell as open. So not necessarily an office smell, but kind of like a large open room or something. It's definitely a pleasant smell, it's kind of just a nothing smell, but you can still smell it, if that makes sense. And what's interesting about it is it doesn't smell like the typical fresh air smell that you think about when you think about fresh air. One thing that we typically associate with fresh air is something called ozone, which is actually a harmful gas. Now ozone is the thing you smell when there's a lot of static electricity or there's lightning storms happening. You'll typically smell ozone. That's because in those reactions that happen, ozone is generated from the oxygen in the air. And so typically we associate ozone with fresh air when in reality it's actually a pretty harmful gas that can cause harm to your body in high concentrations. In fact, that's one of the pollutants that we try to remove from the air in automobiles or other industries. The other smell that we typically associate with fresh air is something called petrichor. Now petrichor is the smell that after it rains that you typically smell. And scientists are just barely figuring out what that smell is and where it comes from. They think that it comes from an oil that's associated with the clay in the dirt that becomes aerosolized once it rains. And for some reason the human body is particularly sensitive to petrichor. So we can smell it in very small amounts. That's why right after it rains it's really easy to smell that fresh rain smell. Okay, so here's my tank of pure oxygen. Turn it on a little. Okay, that just smells like the tube that it's in, so I'm gonna have to take this off because I don't wanna just smell this long tube. So now it's only going through this pressure regulator here. 
Now let's see what it t smells like. So this surprisingly smells a little bit like the pure air, but it's a little bit different. For some reason it kind of smells like flowery almost. So the fact that I could smell the oxygen and it smelled like it actually had an odor to me got me thinking. And I started researching it and I found that there's been researchers that have studied the smell of oxygen. And they found that in their test subjects, 27 out of 28 times humans in the study were able to detect when they switched from air to pure oxygen just based on the smell. And they accounted for the differences in humidity, temperature, and everything. So they couldn't tell that it was being switched other than the smell of it. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so that you can be notified when my latest video's out. And check out theactionlab.com to see the Action Lab subscription box. And you can click the link in my description to see the Action Lab experiment book as well. And remember to check out EnviroCleanse if you're looking to clean up the air in your house. I'll put a link in my description as well. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.